but rather intense period of my life last summer, I became totally obsessed with this Japanese iPhone game called Neko Atsume. I know. <laughs> um, in the game, you have a little cartoon house with a cartoon yard, and your goal is to get little cartoon cats to come hang out there. And the way you do that is by uh, leaving out toys and food. And when the cats come, they give you coins that you use to buy more toys and food to get more cats. <laughs> and, and so on and so on in an endless loop of cat love. Um, so it is ridiculously simple. And I have a feeling that some of you are thinking, this is a game for kindergartners. Um, but what happened was that every time a cat that I hadn't seen before showed up in my online yard, my brain got this hit of dopamine that said, Neko Atsume is the most important thing <laughs> in the world. You are achieving all your life goals. <laughs> uh, I was like a Farmville zealot, except instead of watering fake crops, I was monitoring fake cat food supplies and saving feverishly for a fake pet bed. Um, this went on rather happily for a few weeks until came the day that I collected all the cats in the game, including the rare ones like Mr. Miyagi and Xerxes the Ninth. Um, when that happened, my dopamine levels plummeted. Here was this game that had occupied a rather shocking amount of my mental space. Um, but when I had no new cats to look forward to, it became kind of tedious. In fact, uh, I got so bored that after a few days, I deleted the app from my phone, which you knew all along was the correct life decision. <laughs> um, Perhaps the most worrisome part of this little episode is how often I repeat this cycle in my life of enthusiasm followed by boredom followed by abandonment. Some shiny new object wafts across my field of vision, a, a new book, a new TV show, a writing project, a cause, an idea, and for a while I am entranced by it. But as is the way of all things, eventually it ceases to be new. And when that happens, I lose interest. And I start looking around for what's next. As humans, we have a really terrible habit of fixating on what's next. Biologically, we are primed to crave novelty. Even infants in the nursery light up at the sight of new toys and new faces. This propensity toward novelty seeking can be a positive thing. It can make you curious and creative, but it can also hamstring us. Uh, it makes us distracted and um, unfocused, cursed with tiny attention spans. The CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella, has said that the true scarce commodity is increasingly human attention. And not just the attention it takes to, say, finish reading an 800-page novel, although that would be amazing, um, but the attention it requires to simply live your life without periodically wanting to press the reset button and start the game over again. Consider that the average millennial will change jobs about 6.4 times by the time they turn 30. My generation, the Gen Xers, we're just as likely to switch employers. The truth is, a lot of us struggle with what I call restless soul syndrome. And I think there's nowhere in our lives that that's more evident than in our relationship with our places, with where we live. The average American will move 11.7 times before they die. The better life, we think, is always in the next city, in the next job in the next house, in the next relationship. Recently, the Facebook page Humans of New York featured the story of a woman who confessed that although she had a well-paid job in a city that a lot of us are dying to get to, she felt mired in habit, stuck 
and stagnant. And, and so her solution was she was quitting her job and she was moving to France. She wanted to start over in a place where she could, she said, feel like a tourist in her own life again. She was essentially burning it all down for more novelty. Now, if you hear that story and you think, man, I wish I could do that. Congratulations, you have just been diagnosed with restless soul syndrome. Why have I moved six times through five states in the past 15 years? Well, ostensibly for jobs or schooling, but I have the syndrome too. In Neko at Sumi Terms, I was desperate for a new cat in my yard. But as soon as I got the new cat, all I could think about was getting the next new cat. I moved to Blacksburg, Virginia, a small town in the Blue Ridge Mountains about five years ago. And the novelty of that wore off for me remarkably quickly. M my instinct as a mobile person was to say, I gave this a good two months and it's not working out. Um, so let's uh, pack it in. We're going to find some cheap real estate somewhere else and we're going to move on. Uh, in other words, where is my new cat? But I knew that I had a disease uh, and I wanted the antidote. I wanted to learn how I could stay put in my life. Research led me to this concept of place attachment, which is the emotional bond that some people develop with where they live. Basically, place attachment is the fancy scientific term for putting down roots and feeling content in your life. And it comes with all sorts of benefits for your health and happiness. I wanted that. But how does a restless person become attached enough to where they live to want to stay long term. Well, first you do the opposite of what you want to do, which is move away. And instead, you double down on where you live. You engage and invest hard. And interestingly, that requires a lot of novelty thinking. You have to learn to see your place with new eyes and engage in it in new ways. So I doubled down on Blacksburg, Virginia, like it was my job. Um, I helped start a sidewalk chalk festival. I joined a CSA. I started volunteering making popcorn at the local nonprofit movie theater. I invited neighbors that I hadn't met to dinner. Uh, I forced myself to go to football games, <laughs> even though I hate football. Um, and I, I walked and I biked and I hiked new trails. Basically all these little love where you live experiments that I did were like a novelty bonanza. And they worked. I had this moment one afternoon where I was riding my bike to the farmer's market with my daughter. And I thought, I love it here. I don't want to move any place else. That was an epiphany. You could actually want to stay put in your own life. So if you're like me and you suffer from restless soul syndrome, you can channel that desire for new things into deepening your sense of attachment to where you live and, and what you're doing in your life right now. So you are considering quitting your job and moving to France, um, maybe instead you can start putting googly eyes on the garbage cans and uh, the mailboxes where you live. Uh, or you can be like my friend Lindsay Zervogel in Toronto who writes love letters to her city and then she hides them in public places around town where strangers can find them. Or, or like Jen Prod in Minneapolis, you can print out really corny jokes and, and then tape them up in the downtown business district right before all the workers come out on their lunch break. Um, you can create little jolts of surprise and delight where you live. You can create the kind of novelty that makes you and other people happy. Novelty thinking may even help you like your job more. 
According to Gallup, uh, only about a third of American workers are engaged at work right now, meaning they feel even sort of passionate about it. And while I know it is really enjoyable to plot your dramatic exit from your soul-sucking workplace, um, <laughs> what if instead, in the meantime, you helped, say, organize your office ultimate Frisbee league? Or what if you used a fake accent to convince your customers in the McDonald's drive through line that you're really from Australia? Uh, engagement, it turns out, comes almost entirely from within. And with novelty thinking, you can spur that engagement. You can make your job new again. So the truth is that some of us are always going to feel a little restless. I may always find it more appealing to think of leaving everything behind, burning it all down, and moving on to something new and fresh. But what I've found is that when we use our desire for novelty, to engage more passionately with what we're already doing, we feel like we belong. Not in some imaginary future where everything is different and better, but in our lives as they are right now. We find more meaning and purpose there, we feel more content, and we stay that way for longer. So here is my advice for you. Stop looking for the new cats, because when you do, chances are that you will find that what you were looking for is right here, where you already are. Thank you.